Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for a webinar today about, gosh, how to quickly build reusable document sets with Set Builder from NetDocuments. I guess I had to say it exactly the way it was on the title pane, where we have with us today Phil Nieves from NetDocuments to show us how Set Builder works. So, Phil, are you there? How are you doing this morning? I sure am. Thank you, Paul. Sure. And uh, doing quite well, thank you. Awesome. So, you want to take control and, and give us the, the nickel yeah. tour and uh, show us how this thing works? All right. Let's do this. Go ahead and put my screen over. Hey, Paul, is my screen visible to you? Just want to make it sure. It is uh, visible to. It is visible. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Just making sure before I get rambling too far and uh, realize <laughs> that uh, you couldn't see it. And uh, thank you again uh, for letting me come on here. Um, always appreciate sure. your time as well as uh, your audience's time as well. Um, so we're very excited about what I'm going to show you today. Uh, this is the, the some of the freshest StuffNet documents has recently released, and that's our new product called SetBuilder. Uh, the reason why we're so excited about Set Builder is because of the kind of problems we get to help people resolve. And uh, so just kind of, we'll, we'll just go through a quick overview via this PowerPoint, and then I'll jump over as usual to the actual uh, user interface side and give you a quick walkthrough. Now, with Set Builder, Set Builder is kind of a unique product in that NetDocuments actually acquired this from a law firm um, that uses NetDocuments. Uh, they showed it to us. We thought it looked great and thought, hey, this is actually, this could resolve and help a lot of our clients with similar, similar challenges. So one of the things that Set, the Set Builder is set to resolve is to help clients with the amount of time it takes to create a number or compile a number of documents. Um, which can obviously be very, very time-consuming. Identifying these documents, collecting them, my, our attorneys will say, well, the time I spend trying to compile a document for like a trial binder, for example, um, I don't bill my clients for that time involved. And so not only is the, the time-consuming, the time consumption of part of this, but also the risk that certain documents might be overlooked, as well as the resources involved to compile a number of documents and then generate a binder or something they put onto a CD-ROM so they can share it. There's a lot that's involved. And then the fact that a lot of law firms have to do this process over and over again. And it's a complex task. So some of the areas which NetDocuments has identified where our clients really use SetBuilder, gathering and organizing documents into a, from a matter in a consistent way, Assembling these documents into an electronic PDF file, so something very easy to share, as well as being able to take the prior work you've already done and almost duplicate that to save on time the next go-around. So a lot of our clients that identify Net, uh, Set Builder as a very useful product is for transactional reasons, closing documents. Litigators love Set Builder. Litigation briefs, witness deposition binders, etc., as well as on our HR side, audit list, uh, policy, uh, compliance reasons. These are some major reasons why clients come to Net Documents, see Set Builder, and see the value in it. So enough about the actual overview here. Let's jump over to the user interface. So in a previous discussion, uh, we discussed how. NetDocuments tries to keep everything very central. So what you're looking at here is a workspace, as we call it, or a client matter file. And you'll notice down here below, here's a number of different documents or document types and documents I've placed into NetDocuments. And then up top here, you'll see these different tabs. And we'll go over in a future day some of the collaboration tools which NetDocuments has. To the far right here, you see this tab that says Sets. This is where I'm actually going to walk you through on how to generate a new new binder, or in this case, what we're going to create is a witness deposition. So it really, I mean, the thing I love about this product is that I can really show this, the whole thing, uh, in just a matter of minutes. So what normally takes people often hours to do, I'll show you here in just a few clicks. So quick, quickly, we're just going to create a new set. And Paul, since you're the host of this uh, webinar, we're going to pick on you as usual. 
and uh, we're going to put you down as the this is Paul Purdue witness deposition. Should I be a hostile witness? <laughs> it's, it's, it's your choice. Okay. Uh, put the name here, add it in. Now, every every binder, every good binder should have some kind of a cover page. What I want to walk you through here in this next section is just showing you the different ways which you can get a document from within that documents from my desktop into this binder. So in this case, I know the cover page, which uh, I have that I want to throw in here. My, we'll just say my assistant created it. I know it's in with, within that documents. So I'll just back up here. I'll click on this little document tab or document icon, and now I'm going to access this document from within the workspace. From here, I click on the document uh, subcategory or document type. Here's the cover page I'm looking for. Now, this being my cover page, you'll see the little number next to it. I actually don't want my cover page to have a number next to it. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And then we'll just say, for time's sake, my firm has already created a number of documents that are intended to go into this deposition. So from my desktop, here's the file folder I have already placed there. I can drag and drop this right into SetBuilder. It takes a couple of seconds for it to upload and generate all those documents into that documents, but you can see it's just going through how I already have the folder structure within this document or folder already categorized. That documents is recognizing that. Now I can go ahead and interact a little bit more with the documents I've just placed in here. So one thing that as far as you know, you're picky like me and you have a preference on how your documents appear. Um, I can come up top here and, and, and Paul, this, this hasn't happened yet, but um, I'm, I'm waiting for the day that somebody says, well, what does the hashtag button do? Um, <laughs> whether, you, <laughs> whether you call it hashtag, pound, um, tic-tac-toe symbol, as my mom would say, um, let me show you how you can utilize this in organizing and customizing your view of this binder. So for me, you know, we have the level one, the high-level documents. I want to have the following number system numerically. Uh, but beneath that, I prefer more of the capitalized lettering going on and maybe some Roman numerals as well. With just a couple of clicks, I can now apply that here. You can see now the documents are following exactly as I've listed them. Now also, some of these sub-documents, uh, perhaps maybe I need to just create this or move this over so now this is a sub-document of agreements pending. So you'll see that with just a little just a little flick of my wrist, I can take this document and I can move it over and I can adjust how these documents appear within this binder. Okay. Now also, as I'm generating this binder, maybe there's a time where I'm getting busy, I'm going to get distracted, but I know there's an additional document that needs to go into this binder. So rather than running the risk that maybe later on I'm going to forget to place that document there, what I can do is I can create a placeholder. So we're going to create a placeholder for a document. And uh, if you notice, uh, this is uh, referring to Back to the Future here as well. I love that movie. Uh, and uh, so create a placeholder for that. That way later on I can find the document or place the document there later on. Hit the check mark. I have to interrupt document. you here to tell you that uh, Patty just texted me moments ago to say she loves the Back to the Future theme. So we're already <laughs> talking about your Back to the Future thing. So I'll, I'll mute up again. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad you appreciate it, too. So I've, I've created my placeholder here. And then we'll just say, for time's sake, um, I know the document. Later I get that document in. This document is actually also coming from my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this document into that placeholder. Again, takes a second for it to upload. Now it's there. At this point, I mean, I'm really at a point where I, I can go ahead and generate this binder for now for preview. So we're going to click on this button. There's an option down here to make some comments about this binder or, or deposition I've just created. So we'll just put we'll just put some comments in here. Maybe this is the first go around with this, and uh, I want to preview what I've done so far. Put some comments in here. 
Now, this is going to take a couple of, couple of extra seconds as it's taking all those documents, and now it's going to place them into a PDF, an electronic PDF that I can now share with those outside my firm if I would like to. I can click on this link, and that documents creates a new tab. Now if I want to actually take a look at the work I've just put into this, click on the link, I get that notification like you've seen before where that document is checking this document out to me for preview, which also just because a number of documents can just take a couple of seconds. Once that's available, then I'll walk you through how you can now utilize what we've just created to your advantage and quickly previewing this binder you've created. So here's that beautiful uh, cover page I was referring to before with the Saving the Clock Tower. If I click on this little icon here, I can see the bookmarks. So if I'd like to, I can navigate from the first page all the way down to that placeholder document I was showing you before, as well as quickly navigating to the different headers I've created and the documents that fall beneath them. At this point, I feel like, all right, you know, this this binder looks really good. This deposition is ready to go. Here's my index page, which also looks good. I can go ahead and exit out of this document itself. And now I'm ready to go ahead and share this with somebody outside the firm. So here's an easy way now to deliver this document to somebody outside the firm. Select the Deliver the Secured Link option, because with that document, security is always a priority. In this case, I'm going to limit myself on how long I can actually access this link for and hit send. And just like that, I've taken a brand new binder, placed documents in there from within that documents, from my desktop, a file folder from File Explorer, dragged and dropped into that documents. This has now been created. Go ahead and close this up. Well, the options also that my clients like knowing and seeing is that they can actually clone a folder, binder, deposition if they would like to. So if I'm going to use a similar format the next go around, or I want to take this and make changes to it, go ahead and clone it, rename it, and there, there you have it. We'll navigate back to the sets I've already created. Here's the one we just made today. Here's some previous binders, folders I've created before. And there you go. That is My using problem. Set Builder in just a few minutes. What question can I awesome. answer for you? Well, yeah. is, I'll tell you, I have a question. Is this an add-on product to NetDocuments, or is it part of NetDocuments? That's a, that, thank you. That's a great question. This is actually an add-on service. Um, there, we feel like this has a number of use cases, but maybe it's not for everyone. So this is not included with the base NetDocuments, but it is an add-on service. Thank you. Gotcha. Okay. I have no other questions. All right. I have no other questions. <laughs> well, that's awesome, Phil. Um, it, it, I, I saw it for the first time a couple of weeks ago in one of the partner um, meetings, and uh, it's very impressive. It's, uh, I, I did not know that it was developed by one of the clients. Uh, I remember when we were out there training uh, that Rod told us that there are so many clients that have used the APIs, the, the advanced programming interface, to to write their own stuff, and some of it's really cool. And this must be one of the things that Rod was referring to in that session. So Absolutely, very good. Yep, awesome. Thank you. Okay, well, we know that it would not be. I'm going to go ahead and take my screen back from you. Mm. It would not be an attorney computer systems uh, webinar if I didn't take you to our website and show you exactly how to get to some of this exciting content that we see here. So let me bring this browser down here and show you that if you go to Attorney Computer Systems, notice my emphasis on the last S in the word systems, Oops, because without it, you won't get to the right place, attorneycomputersystems.com, and either hover over the word videos in the menu bar or go ahead and click on it. I'm going to click on it, and it takes me to a bigger listing of all of our video titles. Uh, you'll notice that the first four are live events. The Coffee Pot webinar is where we are right now. We uh, also have three virtual user group meetings, WorldDocs, Tabs 3, and Practice Master, soon to be added NetDocuments and Cosmolex, but uh, we're looking at the details there. Uh, and then we also have some pre-recorded non-live video series. 
We have our e-bikes video series where Mary Jo takes really cool things that we know about any of our five core products. Uh, Net documents, practice master tabs, full of docs, Cosmolex. And uh, if it's really cool and we can explain it in two minutes or less, that becomes an e-bite. So that's what those are. We record uh, a number of these each month on the various topics. And then for things that take a little bit longer to explain, we have the Paul and Mary Jo show where either I or Mary Jo will take a broader topic, one that maybe has a little, little bit more meat or maybe takes a little bit longer than two or three minutes to explain. And we will take anywhere from 10, 15, sometimes even 20 minutes and go into the real real weeds, if you will, as far as whatever it is that we're talking about. So these two are pre-recorded. Uh, these uh, four are already uh, are, are recorded live, as we are right now. If you'll click on more info, I'm going to take you into one that's, uh, that's one of the live ones, the Coffee Pot webinar series. What we'll see is that uh, we've got the title of the series and the brief description about the series. And then since it's a live event, we have a listing of what's coming up next. And it looks like we got Phil back next month. This will be our last, our last month together, Phil. Um, and he's going to come in and, and explain to us how their, uh, their collaborative tools work. He kind of gave you a very brief glimpse of one of the very, very simplest of those tools, which was the deliver a secured link, but there's really so much more. In fact, I'll share a, a story. I had a client and we, we just, Aaron and I were meeting about this implementation today. Uh, we had a client that said, I have looked at the new Practice Master Net Documents integration, and I think it will do just what I want to do as far as a document portal. He had come to us, oh, a couple of years ago, having us, uh, wanting us to custom write a portal to deliver documents to clients from, from Practice Master. And um, it was too expensive. It was more than he thought it would be. But um, these collaborative tools uh, it can be used for a lot of different things. And this particular client uh, was going to use those collaborative tools to deliver documents to clients on a regular basis, basically open up this whole document store to his clients regularly. And that's just one example of the neat things you can do. Uh, you'll notice that we have the time and, and uh, uh, date and then some description and then some fields to fill out. That's how you register. But as you scroll down, you'll notice that we have recorded versions of the live events and the, of course, pre-recorded events um, that, that go back way far. For instance, um, the Coffee Pot webinar series has been going on so long that we have about 20 pages of five or six uh, titles uh, on each page. So a lot of content. I have not counted. It's kind of like the old, uh, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a uh, Tootsie Pop uh, ad. Uh, I, I, I always give up uh, when I try to count, but we have somewhere between uh, 800 and 900 videos on our website, all dealing with the different products that we offer. So there's a lot of content out there uh, and we encourage you to take advantage of it whenever you can. Uh, a lot of learning to be done, and it's 100% cost-free, and it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. So that's it for today. Um, everybody have a good rest of the day, rest of the month, and we'll see you next month when we talk about the collaborative tools from NetDocuments. Thanks, Phil. Take it easy, guys.